Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Fanfic Read Through. I am sorry that I haven't been updating so much lately. It's been, well, it's been a year. I got a cold back in November, and it caused a cough, which did not let go. And I can feel it even now, tickling the back of my throat, which is not the greatest time to be speaking and reading out loud. But I want to do this, and I want to make this story available for more people. I had the audio files already recorded from back before I got the cold. However, I haven't been editing them, so that's what I'm doing now when I'm recording this. Hopefully I will get this all fixed and out before the end of February, and then I will be able to add more of my stories to this YouTube channel. So, to all of you who have been following me from since I started this, well, thank you! And to all the newcomers who have found this channel and like what I'm doing, please, stay tuned, I will do more! Well, that's my one minute rant for today, so... Now then, let's begin. Life's Trial, Chapter 19 to 20. Sam poked at Dennis' left shoulder, making him hiss. He had gotten a nasty bruise, and the arm didn't respond as Dan wanted it to. Yeah, I think it's dislocated again. She sighed. I think I can put it back, but it will hurt. Danny was sitting on Sam's computer chair in her bedroom, the top of his suit pulled down. Tucker was sitting on the bed, his phone in his hand. Make it quick. I can't go back to the foster home with the shoulder like this. He said through gritted teeth. Swallowing, Sam nodded. Relax, and don't fight me. She said. With the calm ease of much practice, she moved Danny's arm into the right position, and with a hard, painful push that made him cry, the shoulder popped back into his place. Shh, keep it down or mom and dad will find out you're here. Didn't you say they soundproofed your room because of all the loud metal music you were playing? Asked Danny, putting his right hand on his shoulder, a layer of frost gathering under his palm. Shrugging, Sam leaned back on her desk, closing the anatomy book she'd been consulting. Sure, but I'd rather not risk it. Just imagine what they would say. She shivered. Leaning back, Danny nodded. Sorry. I'll try not to scream when my shoulder is being moved in a way it shouldn't be. He glanced over at Tucker. Is there any more ghosts around town? Picking up the phantom finder where he had put it, Tucker scanned the screen. Well, there's you of course. He turned left and right. But other than that, we are ghost free for the moment. Good, sighed Danny, rubbing at his tired eyes. I'll just go home and send Boxy back into the ghost zone then. He said, but made no effort to move out of his chair. Don't you think it's suspicious that the box ghost is already out of the ghost zone after less than a day? Sam asked, crossing her arms in front of her, looking at the two boys, as if she was the only intelligent person in the room. Both Danny and Tucker shrugged. You know my dad. He probably tried to do some improvements to the portal, or get him faster internet, or free cell phone service. He lets more ghosts into our world than he keeps out. Nodding, Sam lowered her arms. You have a point. I'm just concerned that... Some other hard ghost is using Boxy to keep you distracted. He normally stays in the ghost zone for a week before attacking again, with some box that's not so scary. Yeah, like the box of sandwiches? I could really use one of them right now, said Tucker, looking at his phone once more. Looking at the thermos containing the ox ghost, Danny sighed. Sam was right. Box was often used by other ghosts as a distraction, most often by a ghost like Skulker. What do you want me to do, Sam? I'm spread thin as it is without splitting myself. Avoiding Dennis's eyes, Sam fingered a loose thread on her shirt. I know you are, but us calling you and having to keep the ghost busy for 20 minutes isn't working. If the ghost is stronger than the ones we've fought already this week. And Box was the weakest of them, and we couldn't even handle him today without you, added Tucker, looking up from his phone. Maybe you should split. Keep a copy of yourself here to protect the town where you live a normal life at that foster home. Tucker suggested, getting a hard look from Sam. Scratching his head, then a sighed. I'd rather not, but if you think it's best, I'll leave a double to look after him at the park. Don't do that, said Sam, apparently having a staring contest with Tucker. You're only half your power, and the drawbacks are not worth the risk, she said, speaking more to Tucker than to Danny. If there's a real strong ghost in town, we need you at full strength. But if there's a real big ghost in town, we need him here. Neither we nor Valerie can keep the real scary ghost occupied for long. 
argued Tucker. Valor can't do anything at the moment, added Danny, getting all eyes on him. I got a ghost gear. I was planning to fix them when I had some spare time, but all the schoolwork, ghost hunting, and acting normal crap is getting in the way. He looked over at Tucker, who was staring at him, mouth hanging open. What? Shaking his head, Tucker looked at Sam, who had a similar expression on her face. If you have her gear, then I can use it to keep things under control here, she said, a twinkle in her eyes. Digging in one of the pockets of his utility belt, Danny pulled out Valerie's four bands. Give it a try, he said. Ten minutes later it was obvious that Sam using Valerie's equipment wasn't going to work. Tucker had watched Sam with a mixture of eager anticipation and curiosity, whereas Danny, having already guessed the result, just watched Sam's facial expressions as she tried to activate the suit. Putting on a band was easy, but getting them to activate turned out to be an impossibility, and after many not so helpful suggestions from Tucker, Sam gave up. How do they even work? asked Sam, handing the bands back to Danny. I think they have something to do with Valerie's emotions, said Danny, telling him about the time during the school trip that Valerie had gotten angry and they had started glowing. It's just a theory, but I think it's sound. How are you planning to fix her gear if you can't even activate it? asked Tucker, his eyes intent on the bands that change into the whole suit with weapons for killing ghosts. Shrugging, Danny handed them to Tucker. I was planning to ask you to see if you can hack into them and get information on how to fix them that way. If that didn't work, I'm thinking of making a deal with Technus again. His two friends looked at him as if he had just said that he was going to join Vlad in an attempt to rule the world. What sort of deal? asked Tucker, holding the bands close to his smartphone. Then he told them. You think he'll agree to it? asked Sam, disbelief evident in her voice. He wants to rule the world. If he agrees to the deal, he'll get to rule more than just a world. Then he said, his right hand on his shoulder again. Besides, we can rig it so he won't do any damage, added Danny, looking at Tucker. Giving up on trying to access the bands through his phone, he tossed them back to Danny, who caught them. And by we, you mean me, he said, getting into one of his what-do-I-get-out-of-it moods. I'm not tech geek, I only know that you can do it, he glanced at Sam. That is, if you haven't learned programming in the last year or so. Sam laughed. When would I have time? With all the first aid I've given you, I can get a medical license before I'm 18, but still have to pay a tech geek to fix my computer when it breaks down. She said, giving Danny a meaningful look. There you have it. You are a valuable tech geek and the only one who can do it, said Danny, placing Valerie's bands back in his pocket on his belt. Anyways, it'll have to wait until I've fixed these social service things. Besides, she's too hurt right now to be out fighting ghosts. He said, getting up and pulling up his suit. Once again, Sam and Tucker exchanged meaningful looks. That's coming from the guy who fights ghosts less than an hour after being stabbed by a possessed sword, muttered Tucker. And getting into a fight with his nemesis while being sick, Sam added, giving Danny a meaningful look. Don't blame me. People would be dead if I hadn't. He said, getting the thermos with the box ghost in it from Sam's desk. Oi, you aren't leaving, are you? We still haven't come up with a plan to keep the town safe, said Tucker, getting up from his seat on the bed. Danny shrugged. We can't do any more than we already are. If a big nasty ghost attacks, then just call me and make sure you two are safe. I'll deal with the rest, he said, flying up to float close to the ceiling. I'll patrol around town every night, and it's only when I'm not at school that I'm not here. Yeah, whatever, said Tucker, crossing his arms over his chest. Don't forget, you promised to go to the poet evening with me tomorrow, Sam said, looking at Danny. I haven't forgotten. I promise I'll be there, he said before leaving the room. End of chapter 18. Chapter 20. Danny missed the end of Danielle's game, but seeing as her team was the one celebrating, whereas the opposing team were sulking, he could guess the outcome. He had flown straight back to Wishing Hill after his talk with Sam and Tucker, and was standing inside the door to the ice hall, watching his cousin. Seeing him, Daniel waved at Danny to come over, and he did. It took him close to half an hour to leave the ice hall. Daniel and her teammates insisted on giving him a play-by-play -play on how they won, seeing as he had missed most of the game. Finally leaving the building, Danny was giving Daniel a one-armed piggyback ride. Being the ice queen hadn't stopped him from twisting her ankle in an attempt to avoid a tackle, and make a goal at the same time. You sure you're alright? asked Danny, but he knew better. 
She was half ghost after all. Whenever he sprained an ankle or dislocated his shoulder, it healed within a day or two. I'll be fine, she said, an arm around Danny's uninjured shoulder. Tell me about the ghost fight you had to go off to. Was it Skulker or Dad? She asked excitedly. Sorry, only little box ghost trying to work out at a storage unit auction, said Danny, and then told Danielle the story of how he single-handedly saved over 50 people taking a hit to his shoulder in order to protect them before generously letting Sam and Tucker capture the box ghost. Danielle laughed at the story, and was still laughing when they walked in through the door to Mrs. Oswald's home. We're home, Danny called into the house. The smell of the evening dinner was making his stomach growl. Good, did the match go well? Mrs. Oswald asked, sticking her head out into the hall. She blinked at the two. Or not? Giggling, Danielle let go of her bag that contained all her equipment, as well as her hockey stick. It was great. We won 7-1. to one. If Angelica hadn't missed the save, it would have been 7-0, to zero, she said, and hugged Danny. He yelped when pain shot through his injured shoulder. Ah, sorry, I didn't mean to. Danielle hurriedly apologized, but the damage was already done. Mrs. Oswald narrowed her eyes on Danny. Is something wrong, Danielle? She asked, using the former pronunciation of his name. No, just a bit sore from carrying a hyperactive child around for 20 minutes. Danny smiled and hitched his cousin high on his back before walking into the kitchen. What's for dinner? He asked, eager to change the conversation topics. Lasagna, Mrs. Oswald answered, her eyes still on Danny, as he put down Danielle on a chair. Awesome! Danielle exclaimed, putting her foot up on the chair beside her. Aware of Mrs. Oswald's eyes on him, Danny made sure to move his arms as though nothing was wrong. I'll take your bag up, he told Danielle. Thanks. Oh, and Mrs. O, are you making the salad as well? She asked, her stomach groaning loudly. Danny hurried out of the kitchen and carried Danielle's bag up to her room before going down to his own. Laying down on his bed, he put a cold hand on his shoulder and using his frost powers, froze the fabric under his hand. The eggs he'd been feeling subsided as he listened to Danielle tell Mrs. Oswald about the game. Slowly relaxing, Danny picked up his phone from his pocket and checked the chat room. Tucker and Sam were once again texting. Tucker, having finally given up on trying to find all the secrets of Doom by himself, was asking Sam for tips. During the conversation, Danny lost track of time until his stomach growled. Looking at the time, Danny raised an eyebrow. Leaving his phone in his room, Danny walked out into the kitchen. The table was set. Danny was sitting on a chair. Mrs. Oswald was standing beside the kitchen counter, an eye on the clock, and one on the oven. Entering the kitchen, Danny got a faint taste of ginger, and it took him a moment to connect the taste to an emotion. Worry. Walking over to his cousin, Danny leaned on the back of her chair. What's wrong? He asked in a hushed tone. She's almost 8pm. Why haven't she called to dinner? Moving a hand in front of her, Danielle looked up at Danny before face palming. Sorry, I keep forgetting that you don't know sign. She's worried because Cody is late and she's thinking he might be in trouble, she answered, her stomach growling loudly. I see, said Danny, his stomach echoing hers. Why were you signing instead of talking? Scratching the back of her head, Danielle looked up at Danny. You know my friend Amanda? Danny nodded, remembering the girl he'd seen at the library the first day. As I said, she's my best friend, and when we don't want anyone else to understand what we are saying, we speak with sign. There's only a few people in school who knows it, she said with a smile. Nodding, Danny glanced at the clock. Yeah, me, Tucker and Sam are using Esperanto as a secret language. Only other geeks understand us. Daniel raised an eyebrow at him. Why that language? Why not something useful like French or Spanish? In a barely audible whisper, Dan explained about Wolf and how he only spoke Esperanto and some rare words in English. And seeing as only the other geeks bothered to learn it, we use Esperanto when we don't want others to understand us. What happened when you can't speak or can't hear? Then you won't understand each other, Daniel asked, a smug smile on her lips. Open his mouth to answer, they all heard a click from the front door opening, followed by a voice that was cut off when the door slammed shut. I'm home, Cody called into the house, and Mrs. Oswald turned from her spot by the counter and walked out into the hall, giving her son an earful for being late. Cody didn't take the lecture that well, and answered his mother back with words that Danny knew hurt. The two stayed in the kitchen, listening to mother and son having a shouting match that didn't end before Cody stomped up the stairs and after yelling that he hated his mom, he slammed the door to his room, making the whole house shake. Neither Danny nor Danielle moved from the kitchen. They could hear Mrs. Oswald's silent sob in the hall. It wasn't before she collected herself that she walked back into the kitchen. 
Both Danny and Danielle's stomachs chose that moment to growl, making Mrs. Oswald smile. Let's eat, shall we? She said, taking the lasagna out of the oven. End of chapter 20